Well, congratulations. Um, we've got the team, we've got the marquee players and now a coach. You must be pretty excited. Couldn't be more excited to be um, a part of this. In fact, 12 months ago, I would never have expected that um, coaching a bit of football in Canberra and being involved in footy all my life growing up would actually lead to one day sitting here as the inaugural coach of the Adelaide Football Club, the women's team. So you didn't expect it, but has it been a dream for a while? Absolutely. I think um, every every little kid growing up, uh, whether they're a, a male or female, wants to uh, be involved in the AFL one day. So. Um, that's just, it's now a pathway that's real for, for women and girls around Australia. And Adelaide is, is one of those, is, is a club of choice here that we, that we want to promote um, coaches, uh, players, and administration support staff too. So you've got that pathway now available for these younger female athletes, but for the team now, what are you hoping to do in this first season? Um, I guess that's a good question. Um, I mean, this is building. Um, you know, we've, we've got to start somewhere. So I'm, I'm not going to say to you, you know, we're going to win seven out of seven games or we're going to lose seven out of seven games, but we've got to build and start somewhere. Um, and, and that's what it'll be to start with. We've got to get the playing list together, uh, work out the kind of style of footy that we want to play and, and go from there. So how, how would, I guess, saying that in your first season, how would you gauge uh, success? What metric will you be using? I think... Uh, the fact that um, we're a, a good culture um, and starting starting something uh, special that that our li little girls and, and women in Adelaide uh, aspire to is is how I would I would gauge success in the first year. You mentioned the style of gameplay. Is yeah. there? Can you give us any insight into what we can expect from the um, from the team? in the first couple of games? Oh, I think at this stage, we've, got, we've obviously got our marquees signed and there are a couple of great players in Chelsea Randall and Kelly Gibson. Um, but until we get the rest, the rest of the uh, ingredients, we can't really make the cake yet. So it, it, it's all well and good for me to say, oh, we're going to have a run and carry style game. But until we, we build the rest of the list, we can't, we can't make those, those calls. <laughs> but what I will say is that I want to encourage um, open football where um, the athleticism of the women on our list um, is able to be demonstrated in the competition where we can see some great high flying marks, some good long kicking and a really exciting brand of football to watch that people want to watch. And you mentioned the two marquees, um, you must be pretty excited having seen their highlight reels. They're fantastic players. In fact, I spoke to both um, Chelsea and, and Kelly in the last 24 hours, um, and I've, I've actually seen um, both of the girls play over the course of the last um, five or six years, and they're really exciting to watch, and, and what a coup for us to have them here at our club. Nope, it's uh, early days, but do you envisage much crossover between, we're just talking about the game style, but the, the men's and the women's teams? Yeah, we do. We, we certainly feel that you know, we've got some expertise with the guys that we can pass on. Um, you know, whether it's strength and conditioning, fitness, GPS, nutrition, um, style of play. So we'll certainly, you know, get back to plug into, you know, to our guys and um, make use of that. I, I think, uh, you know, as you can see, Beck's a very driven individual and, you know, her leadership just, you know, stood out um, strongly in, uh, in the process. Did, was it a Candice? Did everyone have to apply for this, or did you uh, hand select? How did it happen? No, no, there was an application. We we uh, we had a number of candidates, and they uh, they came and presented, um, and it was identical to the to the guys format that we've used with our our last couple of processes with our uh, our senior coaches. So um, we've said all the way along that you know we wanted to be the the club of choice for the girls, um, and that included you know securing who we thought was the best coach to to move us forward, and Be Beck certainly did demonstrated through that. You know she's chased her dream of coaching by moving to Adelaide. Um, she had a you know a strong and successful coaching career in Canberra, and uh, you know her her leadership and off-field skill set where she works has certainly put her in great position for us to, to develop and lead our culture going forward. So what made her stand out? The fact yeah. that she's chased this position for a while? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, she's driven. She's got some really, really strong technical skills, um, you know, from a football sense. So she's worked on opposition um, clubs uh, information at uh, both Queanbeyan and Ainsley back in Canberra in the NEFL competition. So. Um, and she was quite well sought after with uh, you know, the Eagles this year with uh, working at their centre of excellence. So, so she brings with us a, a broad range of school, skills and, and ticked all the boxes that we, um, we felt we needed in this place.
Beckner just talked about just briefly there about your stuff outside of football in terms of your work with the with the AFP. Mm. How much has that helped you? Do you think you know coming across transferring those, those skills that you've gained during that long career? Yeah, I think heaps. I actually think uh, working for the AFP and and coaching football are actually quite similar because you can um, train and plan and prepare for any kind of situation, but come game day or come work day, you never actually know what's going to unfold when you get to work or when you get to get to football. And I sort of thrive on those uh, uncomfortable situations um, and and push through. And, and like to um, be able to lead teams in that context. So I, I suppose that they are quite similar in that regard. There may be things with the AFP <coughs> where you can't talk about, but you know, were you going out in the field or? Yeah, currently I'm the, uh, the team leader of the joint anti-child exploitation and team in um, in Adelaide, uh, and that's a joint team with South Australia Police. So uh, we look after and protect um, kids online, um, and that's a really that's a really big um, big area of focus um, for the AFP also. So that's the type of work I'm doing at the moment, which I find quite rewarding. So the players can expect a bit of a drill sergeant on the track. <laughs> um, I don't think I'm one of those uh, coaches that sort of rants and raves and points fingers or anything like that. I, I feel like I, my communication style probably that I've developed over the years at work um, and at football through all different levels of coaching, whether it be coaching uh, NEFL players who are earning, you know, just around a, under 100 grand a season, down to youth girls players, females in under 18s. But the message is the same, it's just how you deliver it. So you, to get the best out of your players, you've just got to adjust your message a little bit. Was this a position that you had identified like when, the, when obviously the you know, league was first talked about and obviously when the Crows you know, sort of got their licence earlier this year? Look, I knew that I wanted to coach um, uh, in the AFL um, and, and that there were opportunities in the women's space to do that. Whether um, I was going to be able to break into that market, there is actually uh, a number of great female coaches out um, in Adelaide and, and around Australia. So I feel quite lucky to have been successful, su successful through this process and um, ended up here today. You've obviously coached some men's football, you know, um, before as well. Do you sort of is that sort of your aspiration at the end to be on a coaching staff in a, in a men's team? I think um, it doesn't matter if it's male or female football. I want to coach at the highest level I can because, as I said, I, I like being in uh, and in, in situations where I can continue to learn, develop, and grow. Whether that be in men's football or whether that be that end in this position here, I'm not sure where that that will be. But hopefully, I, I continue to get better and and, and develop.